sisters come and the Philippines has many elements of this. Even parts of the Antilles region like St. Lucia, Grenada, substantially in Trinidad are very much Catholic countries. Jamaica is not a Catholic country. We have no Catholic culture here for the most part. Why? Because we were subject to British colonial rule. And one of the things that we may find it difficult to understand, but we must know the history, is that up until a hundred years ago, the twinkling of an eye in the history of a people, who ruled you politically were the ones who had a very, very important say in determining what was the religious culture. And therefore, since the Anglicans were British, the British established church, yes? The Bishop of Jamaica, the Anglican Bishop of Jamaica was a paid civil servant up until 1911 in Jamaica. The rectors of the parishes, Spanish Town, Maypen, so on, received a salary from the government. That was the nature of what was called the established church. It is not surprising that Catholicism was suppressed after the Spanish lost in 1655 and during the two, three hundred years of British colonial rule. And one of the first aspects of recognition of us as Jamaicans and Catholics must be to give thanks for the religious freedom which we have in this society. Don't scorn it or take it for granted, Church of Deanery 6. It is a great blessing that we, of whatever denomination, and we as Catholics must have a long enough memory and sufficient knowledge to remember the times when the French emigres came up to above rocks and to other places from Haiti. But it was before Catholic emancipation in England and therefore before it was legitimate to practice the Catholic religion in Jamaica. And they had to hide. And the first Jamaican priest took any, who was of their stock, had to carry out his ministry as if in a shadow. He could not announce that mass was going to be held publicly because of the political climate. And whatever we say about our country and however disappointed and critical we are, rightly so from time to time, let us prize the fact that we enjoy a measure, of, a great measure of religious freedom and that is different from many other countries close to us and far around yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. And that is a gift, the freedom of conscience and the freedom to practice our religion. Yes, very important. Despite the fact that we do not have a Catholic culture, Catholic symbols, as we will go on to say, are not easily understood. We are, we are misinterpreted in so many ways. Yes? Many of, of, of us have faced this in our daily life. If you face the questions from the Jehovah's Witnesses or from the Seventh-day Adventists, very often you will say, but how could these people be so misunderstanding about our church? True? You know, I preach more in Seventh-day Adventist churches than I do in Catholic churches. <laughs> yes, purposely. Because I want to represent them. I tell them I'm Joseph, their brother. Yes? That they are going down to Egypt to get grain. Yes? And I'm there, not with any, any, any greatness or holiness, God knows. But I greet them as their brother. Because after all, I'm an Adventist too. I hope you are. I'm looking for the soon coming of my king. Yes? I'm an Adventist. Yes? And I may not be a Seventh-day Adventist, but I recognize their Sabbath. The only difference is that I'm a Resurrectionist. And in the tradition of the early church, I celebrate the first day of the week as the day of resurrection, which is the defining doctrine and hope of me as any, and all of us as Christians. So don't you shrink back as Catholic Jamaicans. Be proud of your heritage. Yes? That's the message I have today. We have a whole heap to be proud of. I'm a Catholic, have remained one, because of two main reasons, two main teachings of our church. One is our teaching about the Eucharist. Yes? I can't explain it, can you? But it is the most wonderful 
doctrine that I can think of. It is enough to bend our minds and make us eternally grateful that our Lord, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Son of Mary, would come and not only give himself in sacrifice for your sins and mine, and God knows I have plenty for him to bear for me. <laughs> yes? We all have. Yes? Not only would he do that, but that he would understand how weak and frail we are, and he would leave himself, body and blood, soul and divinity, in the form of consecrated bread and wine and say accept this yes as the fullness and reality of my presence which you Sunday after Sunday day after day if you can yes can take into your bodies and make part of you so that we can become like him and that we I'm trembling now we can be part of the way the truth and the light of his coming kingdom. That, that's, that's enough for me. That's mystery, that's mystical, that can hold you together. And we as Catholics, as Jamaican Catholics, need to not be at all embarrassed or puzzled about the words, forget about transubstantiation and all of those things. Yes, difficult to understand. Just tell them that your faith is and your life experience is that Jesus comes to you and resides in you and you become him and he becomes you, yes, through the Holy Eucharist. <laughs> and then the second is not unconnected with the first, but the second thing that keeps me in this church is that this remarkable ragtag sinful, backsliding, holy, precious body of humanity that has striven, striven to hold on to the hem of Jesus' garment like that worthless, miserable, hopeless woman when she was afflicted by the issue of blood. She had been to every Obia woman, Obia man, east of St. Thomas and she couldn't get any healing. Yes? And she saw him coming. Yeah? She saw him coming, remember? And in her desperation to reach out and hold on to him. Yes? As so many people would hold on to you and me and sometimes brush them away. As the disciples would have had him do. Remember? Work the text. Yes? And they said to him, who? He said, somebody touch me. And they said to him, Boy, who could have touched you? Which? Look at enough people here. You couldn't tell which one. And she came forward. <laughs> and she said, it's me. And he knew her. And he healed her. And I believe that that healing is to be found, yes, amidst all of the sins and all of the merit of the Catholic Church in the social teaching of the Church that our Holy Fathers over the centuries and the Fathers of the Church from the first and the second and the third centuries have brought to us and handed down to us and of which we are the trustees and the repositories, yes? Mahatma Gandhi said he respected Christianity. The only trouble was that he had never met a Christian. <laughs> because so many of us, so many of us, me included, yes, more than you, yes, what we do is that we understand or we have a glimpse of where the healing of the nation really lies. And somehow we get so stuck in our practices, in our form, we become so secular in our outlook, we become so addicted 